Hey, I'm Brett McLaughlin, and I am an editor here at O'Reilly, and I'm sitting here with David Griffiths, who's just sort of all-around programmer extraordinaire, right? Does yeah. all kinds of things. And I know we're focusing today on video and HTML5. I know that a lot of people have heard about the video tag. It's, it's very sexy. I guess the question I have is, is, is it a big deal, though, because we can already embed, we can already, I mean, even if you don't go to the Flash school, mm. you can embed objects. It kind of, it's it true that you can actually get video. We've had video for a while, but the thing that native video uh, does is it makes video part of the, the HTML family, mm -hmm. which means that all of the things that you're able to do to other HTML elements, like, you know, apply CSS style sheets, okay. um, change things, move things around, layer them, make them transparent, you can now do to video. So when you talk about CSS, give me a few examples, because I think that, I mean, sizing, I mean, what, what can you really do with CSS that you can't do? Um, well, you can do things like layering, layering things over the top of videos okay, if you wanted to. Now, there, right. are some, there are some browser platforms that allow you to do that with certain plugins. So if you're going to put QuickTime video inside Safari, mm -hmm. you can layer things. Mm -hmm. But it's not guaranteed across all of the, the different platforms. Okay. Because really, you know, that, the video in a plugin is handled by a third-party piece of software. So the big deal is here is that we're not relying on a plugin. We're not relying no. on a third party. No. And, and speaking of third parties, I hear there's a rumor that we're doing some Google TV stuff today. I think someone said something <laughs> to me that there was going to be some kind of Google theme to the day. So talk through that. What's what's the deal, and how does that even relate to, to video, per se? Well, one of the things that we're hoping to look at today is, is Google TV itself. And, and if you've not seen Google TV, Google TV is really the ability to run a, a copy of Google Chrome mm -hmm. inside a TV set. Mm -hmm. And, you know... That sounds straightforward, but the truth is that it's, a, it's quite a restricted platform. You're probably okay. dealing with something which hasn't got the power of a desktop machine. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to try and investigate some of the issues around that to see kind of just how difficult it is to try and optimize a, a video application to run on okay. Google TV. Well, let's take a look at what we're building today. Okay. So I'll switch back to the video JS, and I think the first thing we need to do is whenever at the moment we select a video, mm -hmm. nothing happens. It mm -hmm. simply goes full screen, but it doesn't actually start to play. Right. Okay. Now what I'll do is inside the select function, if I take the the video itself, which is represented by the the video element, mm -hmm. and to play it, I simply call the play method. Okay. Okay. And why, I'll, why would you not? I why mean, would you not call the play <laughs> method? And the other thing I'll do, because I'll switch off, you know, we've got these weird looking controls that are there all of the time right. on, the, on the small videos particularly, just look kind of odd. Mm -hmm. I'll get it so we can remove those from there. Okay. And I'll do that in the main page, but for now, when the video... Right, that was just that controls valueless attribute, Exactly. Right? We can take that off the element there, but that okay. means that we can, it'd be quite nice if when a video is selected that the controls are there. I see. Because we might want to drag okay. the controller along and go to a different part of the okay. video. So I think whenever we're selecting a video, we need to make sure that the controls are enabled. I see. Okay. okay. And we can do that by saying this dot element dot controls equals true. Okay. Okay. Now, when we deselect an element, we'll need to do the just opposite. Reverse that. We'll just reverse it. So this is all by virtue of this, this video element has some behavior attached to it as well. It does, yeah. That's why it's kind of, in many ways, it's very similar to using images in pages. Mm -hmm. But videos are a lot smarter than images. They've yeah. actually got methods associated with them that allow you to do things. Right. Well, and so, I mean, it, it's worth pointing out because there are, there's a group of really hardcore semantic people, probably yep. the people that, that could not only tell you what SGML stands for, but <laughs> actually show you yep. like some sort of lengthy novel they've written in it, mm -hmm. th that are freaking out because this is mixing an element with, with some behavior. I mean, we're starting to see, like you don't, you don't call a div tag and tell it to move, um, no. it'll change its position, but now we're actually talking to an element and having it do, some, do something. Yeah, I mean, HTML, it, it, the thing I think I really like about HTML5 is it's quite pragmatic. Mm. And it has got lots of things like semantic tags in there. Mm -hmm. You know, there are things which, to be honest, we've not really covered in these videos, right. um, which do allow you to put a lot more meaning into web pages. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be kind of, you know, very important. Right. Um, but the good thing is that HTML5 is very pragmatic. It, it, it doesn't say what is the absolute right and perfect way of doing things. Right. It says what's the most workable thing. Yeah. Like removing the type 
yeah. attribute away from the script tag. You don't have to give it there if you yeah. want. You know, reducing the size of the doc type. Right. Well, and here's a case where does the video tag now suddenly become a little more object-like and maybe violate something? Well, yeah, but mm. it makes perfect sense to call play on it and not have yeah. to create a JavaScript object, bind it to that, write a play method, exactly. on and on and on. And you know, HTML initially was a kind of um, an information format. And as time's gone on, it's become much more a kind of interface yeah. format. Right. It's to do with the way you interact with it. It's not simply the information that it holds. OK. So we've removed the controls. Remove the controls. And while we were talking, I went in and I added some code in the deselect method that will pause the video when it gets deselected. Mm -hmm. And then I switched the controls on and off dynamically. Got it. OK. okay. So when if I it go comes up, we should see controlless videos. We do indeed. OK. And then when we select one of the videos, it actually starts to play automatically. Okay. And if I hover over it, oh, okay. then you start to see now the, that's the video Now, that's interesting. Controls. That's something that we haven't talked about. Is that just a, a virtue of using the programmatic? Um, showing the controls? I mean, it's, why is it's that? Basically, it basically just seems to be, I think it's because we're going in via the JavaScript. Huh. It simply works that way. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it does certainly look a lot better, though, once it's okay. actually playing. Um, I mean, I think if, if when we were using the, the controls that were there all the time,